What's up everyone? Welcome back to Candy's Classic Game Shrine and today is the day. That's right, I'm finally doing the McWill Game Gear screen mod. Um, it has been quite an intimidating task. It is my second most intimidating task that I have taken upon myself since I opened up my Sharp NES TV. If you're interested in that video, I'll leave a link in the description. However, that's not what today is about. Today is about replacing the piece of shit screen that is normally in the Game Gear for this gorgeous custom screen here. It's a little yucky on the outside, but that's because there's a screen protector. Place that down. So, I have my instructions for my particular model. And we are going to go ahead and complete step one. Now, I just want to let everyone know I am not adding the, um, oh my god, the VGA connector to this thing. I have no reason for it. And, uh, yeah, that's just unnecessary steps for me. So, we're going to start by removing a bunch of the capacitors, um, or resistors, rather, R33 to... Or 43 as listed here. So I'm going to mount the uh, the camera and you will see me do what I got to do. Okay, so an update. I tried to record me taking the specific chips off the board. However, it's just too difficult because this, let's see if I can do it over the paper towel background. Focus, you little shit. That tiny thing between these tweezers are the chips that I need to remove. This tiny little thing here. So trying to remove them and getting it on camera is really difficult. So what I'm going to do is show you the location of the chips on the motherboard and then show you it re removed from the board. This here in the tweezer is chip R33, which is located right next to this wheel. It's also on the diagram here, which makes it much easier to find. So we're going to continue this process throughout. This is going to be a long video, guys. So buckle up, buckaroos. Next set of chips are going to be chip number R34 and chip R32. <clears throat> if you can't see them already, they are located Again, next to the same wheel we removed R33 from, they're gonna be right here. This is R34, and this right here is R32. So we're gonna go ahead and remove these as well. I don't know if I'm gonna need them or not, but I have a little thing here where I can place the chips and they're labeled. So, yeah, there's that too. We have removed R34 and R32. Next up, we need to remove R57 and R56. Here, let me get my little dental pick here, and I'll point them out to you guys. They should be right around here. This should be 57 and 56. See, here's R56 and R57. So let's remove those two, and we'll check back. R56 and R57 have been removed. On to R41 and R38, which are going to be hiding in two different spots. R38 is going to be slightly below where we just took the chips off. As you can see, there's the R38 right here, this horizontal chip. And R41 is going to be a vertical chip. R41 should be slightly below this dot, and it is, what do you know? It's right there. Okay guys, so we are going to remove this chip here, R41, under this dot, and we are going to remove R38, which is right above that dot. Stay tuned. And that little son of a bitch R38 is finally gone. That one gave me a bit of trouble, did not want to come off the board for fucking anything. But, in the end, I won. You can't win against a woman. LOL, JK. Um, but yeah, next up is going to be the R43 chip that is right here. 
and we are going to go for the R44 chip, which is right there. If you're looking for easy identifiers, um, on the ASCII one, you are going to look for this little, uh, I guess this is a capacitor box. I'm not quite that perfect with electronics and their components, but right here. And the R44 is going to be right next to this green little box and this chip right here. Again, all of this has been on the left side of the motherboard. So if that helps you, hopefully it does. Let's move on to the next chips. All right, everyone, we have removed R44 and R43. Let's take a closer look. R43 is right there. R44 is right there. Boom and boom. We are done with this step. Well, technically we're still on step one, but we're on step one, or step two of step one. And we're going to be removing the L2 coil, which according to the schematics, it is next to the Q4, I'm going to call it a chip because I don't know the name of these things technically, and it is circular next to C70, so let's look on here, and L2 right here, so we're going to be removing this right here. Alright, I'm going to make a little note on my piece of paper on what I'm taking, and we will get back to you when it's off. Hello, no, I haven't removed anything. However, I do want to show you guys that in order to remove the L2 coil, you do need to flip the motherboard over and this right here and this right here next to this M16 are where you're going to be desoldering. You can use a regular soldering iron to get rid of it, or you can be fancy and use a desoldering gun like I have off camera and I'm reaching for right here. You heat it up. You stick this end over where you're taking the solder off, push that button, and it sucks up the solder. So, yeah, we're going to get done with that, and I'll get back to you. The L2 coil has been removed. It is now sitting over here on the little piece of paper. It was removed very easily with the help of my desoldering iron. It left some really clean holes as you can see right here but yeah enough of that enough of my happiness over neat desoldering let's move on to the next step next step is removing the q chips i called them they're actually transistors and we're going to be removing three of them right now labeled q4 q3 and q6 q3 is located under the l2 coil or at least where it was see right here and Q4, if you can't see, is right here on the other side of where the L2 coil was. And Q6 is this tiny little black chip here. Let me see if I can get a better shot. See, Q6 is this little chip here. And you can also go back and double check it with the schematics if you're not feeling confident. But so far, so good. I will show you when I'm finished. We did it. We finally got off the goddamn transistors and holy crap are they a pain i don't know if it's my shaky hands that make it impossible but they required a well at least q4 and q3 needed a bit of work but uh the board is now clear of them we're starting to see a bit more room clear up and next up we have to take off c69 and c70 these are capacitors and you can find them right here and this white box right here on the top. Now, uh, like the dummy that I am, I forgot to mention that you are going to be desoldering this point and this point on the very top, the top two here. Not these uh, several, focus, not these several pins here. You're going to be taking those top two off for the one capacitor. And the next one, let me just double check myself. is going to be these two right here next to the original holes that you took off for the L2 coil. So, again, before I forget, you are taking the top two soldering points here and the two soldering points next to the holes we have left over from the coil L2. 
if you can see, we got rid of C70 and C69 is, god damn it, right, focus, right there. So, we are done with desoldering for the moment. Uh, I also kind of skipped a step in my process of tearing down the Game Gear. I had already gone ahead and removed the screen from the motherboard because it was a pain to work with it. I peeled everything off. Luckily, nothing was left behind. Kind of used to that from the, the Virtual Boy. It's very similar. At least how they uh, adhere the displays on the Virtual Boy. So, next up, it wanted me to, let's look at this together, remove LCD, peel off the ribbon cable, that's what I just showed you that I did, remove the plastic screw mounting upper housing, or remove the middle plastic screw mounting of the upper housing with pliers. So what they mean, I can't really move this because I taped it down, but what they mean is this pillar here, it needs to go. So I'm gonna use an X-Acto knife, a Dremel, and a razor blade and we're gonna get this filed down and we will continue and I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done but uh, word to the wise when you're working on it be careful that you don't screw up the speaker wire because that's what's here here is the housing and there's where the stock used to be it sits nice and flush now here is the old little stock and now we have to remove the CFL lamp that's here and the fuses FU1, which is under here, and FU2, which is underneath underneath here. So we're going to have to turn this back over again and hit up these two points here and get rid of the solder. Before I continue with this, I want to add, um, you can see I already desoldered the fuses here but in order to get the actual CFL out you're going to have to desolder this point here and this point here and that will free it from the board off we have the CFL removed from those two points that I told you they'll be labeled 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 FL on either side and you can access them from the front or the back depending on what your tools are and what is easier for you. Here is the disassembled CFL. This is no longer useful. We'll put that in the crap pile. And here are the two fuses that we removed and they can also go in the crap pile. Uh, replace R24 with R30 and replace R25 with a 200 ohm resistor. So let me find it on this schematic and I will show you we're still on step one so C20 or R24 and R30 all right guys we're finally working on the right side of the motherboard now here's R24 R25 and where is R30 R30, where are you? There it is. Okay, so we have to connect this, or we have to, re let's see, hold on. Replace R24, yeah, we have to replace this with this, and then replace that, this little one here next to R24, with a 200 ohm resistor. Next up, let's get to it. Step eight says to replace R24 with R30. Here they are extracted right here on the paper. So I'm going to be taking R30, that tiny chip, and moving it to right here. I put some solder on there so it should hopefully be easy to make contact and just put right back in place. We have removed R30 and R24 and replaced R24 with R30. As you can see, give me a second, it's been a long modding process. As you can see right here, where it says R24, this tiny little chip is my really shitty solder job. 
with the R38 chip. And the empty spot behind it is R25, which we have removed in order to replace it with a 200 ohm resistor. So once that's done, we are to replace C39 and, C30, uh, and C40 with a 10 PF capacitor. Well, with two, one for each. And um, those can be found. There's C39, there's C40. And we take those out and we replace them. Well, pretty sure it's those two right there. Yeah, C40 is this tiny little one here, not this large one. And C39 is obviously the one labeled right there. So those will be coming out as well. And we'll be soldering on a couple little pieces there. We have replaced C39 and C40 with the 10 picofarad capacitors. And as you can see, they are right there. And holy crap, were they a bitch to put on. Okay, so now we are going to replace R25. Well, we already took it off, but we're going to put a 200 ohm resistor in place of where the R25 chip was right here. The 200 ohm resistor is this tiny little piece here. Right there. And again, it is going to go right here in the space of R25. Okay, and the resistor has been installed. If you can't see, let me point it out for you right here. Next up is adding the zero ohm bridges to R13 through R16 on the board, which are these tiny little bastards right here. And they're going to be replaced with... four of these. All right, everyone, we did it. It was the biggest pain in my ass, but I did it. Particularly the one next to the chip right here. The ones with the zeros are the ones that I just installed. Okay, next up we're going to be putting a wire on the VCC and the ground of the actual Game Gear mod itself. So get your wire and your soldering iron ready. Here we have the two wires soldered to the board. And then the next step I went ahead and did, which included soldering one wire from the T10 chip to the lower part of the R23 chip. So that would be right here. That was T10, and there's the very bottom of R23. Next up, we are going to be soldering another wire from the CLK32 megahertz part of the Game Gear mod to the FB1 chip over here under the golden part here. Oh, here it is. We're going to be soldering a wire from here to... haven't even found that on here yet, but something on here. <laughs> okay, so we soldered the one point from FB1, which is right here, to the CLK32 megahertz point, which is right here. The middle dot on the screen and that is that for that step next we're going to be soldering a wire from the Game Gear SMS point on the Game Gear mod to the pin 42 of the Game Gear cart slot okay so the next step I went ahead and did you're going to take uh, a piece of wire and solder it on the first pin by the thumb wheel and then connect it to the VCC of the Game Gear right here and then you're going to do something very similar with the third pin and connecting it to the ground of your game gear. Okay, on to the next step. Okay, so the next step required soldering wires from butt, well, I'm going to call it butt 1, 2, and 3 on the game gear mod to the corresponding butt 1, 2, and 3 on the game gear original board. <clears throat> So you can see there's three to three, two to two, one to one. And it's very specific as to where you want these solder points to be. Otherwise, it's not going to work. 
Okay, the moment is finally here. It's all finished. And this is the result of having to do uh, the last step of step three or step two, depending on how you did this. Uh, basically, it asks you to solder six wires from the old LCD ribbon, which is this bit down here. And then it wants you to attach those to the corresponding points on the new LCD screen, which are up here. They are labeled over here on the VGA steps, so you can find out which of these little dots you need to solder the wires from the ribbon cable to. Next up is to reassemble the system and see if I did this correctly or if I fucked up royally. All right, everyone, the moment has come. I reassembled the Game Gear and it's time to power it on. However, before I do, I forgot to mention in the video, when you're reassembling your Game Gear, there's a little metal shield, I guess you can call it, that was not part of the motherboard but part of the back plate. You're supposed to bend or cut the tabs off which is illustrated in a really small portion of the instructions. I did that way beforehand, and it didn't even occur to me to put it in the video. Just wanted to put that out there. So, enough stalling. Let's turn this on. I don't have enough batteries, so I have to use the power adapter. That is a pretty bright screen. This is the new screen in action. Not bad if I do say so myself. Considering I'm the one that installed it myself, I was really worried I was going to screw up somewhere because this was a pretty daunting task. However, this is going to be super rewarding now. And with that adventure, till next time guys, take care.